It's not often that I like to read out emails from my correspondents, people who watch the videos, uh, mainly because I absorb so much information. People say so many things and I'd be here forever, forever reading out some of the amazing stuff that comes through. But every now and again, I just think actually it would be worth having a look at some of the correspondence that you send to me because there's so much of it and so much of it is, is far better than any of the nonsense that comes out of my mouth, for example. And so I thought today, just for something to do, we would, uh, we would read the correspondence. And this one is particularly interesting. I like this one. I like this. I like them all. So, you know, carry on emailing me. By the way, just to let you know, I can't always reply. So bear that in mind. A bit like Vision On, if you are of a certain age um, in this country. We had a TV programme where kids used to send their pictures and Pat Kiesel used to stand there doing sign language like this. She wasn't actually betting. A lot of people thought, you know, she was standing by a window so that she could actually bet on the races. That was not true. She was actually uh, doing sign language and saying that we, we're really sorry we cannot return your pictures uh, because we put them on the bonfire at the end of the day and we can't be asked to send them back to you. And it's a bit like that with me. Uh, send in your emails, but I can't always guarantee that I will be able to reply to you because there are I get deluged by them. Anyway, so let's get on to this. And this is about panic. Are you panicking? Should you be panicking? Why are you panicking? There's so much bad news, isn't we? We've heard about IDs. We've heard about central bank digital currency. We've heard about net zero. There's so many things to panic about. There's ULEs and all this sort of nonsense. So here we go. My correspondent says, do you know the second worst thing that anyone could do is panic? Panic. Yeah, that's the second worst. When in a state of, when in a state of panic, it's difficult to make rational decisions. Look up, looking for sensible solutions becomes clouded in the mayhem. And I think we can all agree with that. And the result often ends with mistakes easily made, which will probably exacerbate the situation. That's true. That's the second worst thing that anyone can do. So the number one worst thing, what is that, do you suppose? Well, my correspondent says the number one worst thing you can do is to instill panic in others. Right. People um, become confused and are easily manipulated when they're panicked, especially if the one doing the panicking is in a position of some authority and trust. Um, this borders on evil intent. Yes. So there you are, uh, an authoritative figure installing panic. And of course, people will be confused. They could do all sorts of things, perhaps things that they didn't normally every day would want to do. And that's an interesting thing. That authority is now, if it's installing panic, instilling panic, is able to manipulate and coerce the population to do its bidding. Think of Hitler, the Nazi party, pushing the German people into yet another world war. Hmm. See, it's very easy. You can manipulate people if you can get them to panic. It's an old, old method of the old playbook used by many of the elites and the globalists and the cabal. Well, says my correspondent, boys and girls, that's exactly what's happening right now. Since March 2020, we have been pushed by some authority into panic mode. Oh, honey, Mr. Manring. Oh, honey, Mr. Manring. They don't like them up them. They don't like them up them, Mr. Manring. Oh, don't panic. Well, coerced into believing that the virus was going to kill millions of us, out of fear, we were told to hide, so we hid in our homes. We were told to work from home, and that resulted in many of us losing our jobs, our businesses, our livelihoods, and our lifestyle, all for the sake of a virus. Yet, according to every medical dictionary and uh, medical manual available, coronavirus is just the common cold. That's what it is. Every doctor, every nurse, every pharmacist is aware of this. It it's their job to know. You would expect them to know, wouldn't you? Of course you would. Um, so my correspondent goes on to say, they, they also know that it's impossible to vaccinate against a virus because viruses are just cellular debris. I'll just say that again just to let that sink in, in case you were panicking. Viruses are just cellular debris, and we breathe them in constantly. We even create some of this debris ourselves as we shed and replace our skin every five weeks. We also replace our bloods every three weeks. So where, do you imagine, all these dead cells go? 
These millions and billions and trillions and zillions of dead, discarded cells from every animal and vegetable and fungus that have ever lived, where do they go? Where do they go? Well, of course, it's the dust you see floating in the sunlight. How can you possibly vaccinate against something like that, so prolific? I mean, it's really impossible, isn't it? It must be. All that dust, how do, you, how do you vaccinate against that? My goodness, you'd be taking vaccinations every 20 seconds of your life, if not sooner. It's really impossible, says my correspondent. He carries on and says, that's why every living organism, every animal, including humans, have evolved over millions of years to deal with such debris. It's called, wait for it, big illuminated sign and lovely dance music, it's called the immune system, and it's extremely effective. Yet we humans are the only species to be forced, forced to take a vaccine. A vaccine that doesn't stop the transmission either, doesn't prevent infection, and doesn't protect you from anything your immune system can't deal with. Nobody has to believe a word of this, of course, he says, but I highly recommend you look it up. Not on Google, not on the internet, not online. Google can manipulate the narrative with a simple click of the keyboard, of course. Best you look it up in books, go to a library, the medical section, or go to second-hand bookshops off eBay. Old books, they're the best ones, the ones that haven't been reprinted and been manipulated, that's what I would say. But the very best, best thing you can do is not to panic and use what God gave you, your brains, your ability to think for yourselves or have these manipulative authorities taken that ability from you. It's a very, it's a very good point and I think it's poignant at this particular moment. We know that people panicked and they did go off and they had that medical intervention they did have that, and the government and the mainstream media were, were panicking us, telling us how many people had died and, and all of this, and we were all cajoled. And, and it wasn't just us. It was the fact that this was carried out across the world, which made it so easy for everyone to go, well, it must be true. It must be true because everybody is doing it. But if everybody does a lie and says the same untruth... Does it change it from an untruth to a truth? If everybody says the same lie, it doesn't mean that it's suddenly become true. It just means more people are lying. More people have been confused, isn't it? Isn't that what that means? It's, I mean, it's very easy to accept the idea, well, blimey, they're doing that in Italy. They're doing it in Japan. They're doing it in uh, wherever, Norway. They're doing it in America. But does that actually mean it's true? Maybe not. Maybe we, we should be thinking, actually, what is it they're doing? They're, they're advising you to have this medical intervention. But maybe that isn't true. Maybe that is not a good idea. Maybe our immune system, which has kept us alive for hundreds of thousands of years so far, especially against something which is really just the common cold, is that, is that not a, a good thing to rely on? So we've been panicked into that. But we're going to be panicked again. And this is why I think this is such a good piece of correspondence that I wanted to put out to you. We are going to be panicked by a number of things. We're being told that already that we've moved into what they call the era of climate boiling. Because one month apparently is the hottest month. July was the hottest month for 120,000 years. I reported about that yesterday. So the UN General Secretary mumbled out. Uh, and, and, uh, but the thing is, use your common sense, use your ability, your brains, critical thinking. Is that really true? Is that really the hottest in, in July? Wait, July is a summer month, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a summer month. It gets hot. We're going to be panicked about ridiculous things. There are going to be more of these threats of lockdowns. Oh, we need to lock down. Wait, wait, uh, didn't we do that? Didn't we find out that actually that was not a good policy, that there were more suicides, there was more child abuse, that there were more marriage breakups, that there was more loss of jobs, that industry fell apart, that we started to get depressed, that we were taking more drugs, that we were eating the wrong kind of foods, that we were getting um, obese? Didn't we, didn't we learn that actually 
that the remedy thrust to us by the authorities, by this manipulative authorities, uh, did we not realise that that actually was actually gross misconduct on their part? Was that not an absolute lie? Was that a failure? If anyone tells you to lock down again, think about it. Think what happened last time. And the other thing that obviously is, is now dripping into our consciousness, why now of all times, is this whole UFO nonsense, this alien nonsense. Now, I'm not saying aliens don't exist. I mean, it would be very arrogant of me to say that humans were the only species that had some form of intelligence. Well, look at us. Are we really that intelligent against the animal kingdom who don't leave detritus everywhere that can't biodegrade? I mean, we're not terribly... We, th we think of ourselves as being sophisticated, cultivated, and all these sort of things. And yet we're the ones that rape the planet of all its raw ingredients, all its raw materials, and we then turn it into something that has toxins in it and that leach into the, uh, into the earth and into the watercourses and then into us. We're the only species that purposely poison one another in great numbers. We're the only species that do all of this sort of nonsense to the earth. The other species just get on with life. They enjoy life. They, they look at the sunset. They, they sit and they eat stuff. Yes, they might attack each other. They might have some certain things. But they don't go around uh, purposely killing and maiming just for the fun of it, anything, and raping and pillaging. And, and You know what I'm trying to say. But we're going to be told, we're going to be told that another species, aliens, have come to this planet and that we're going to see Project Bluebeam, I think it's called. You know, this, this hologramic, holographic thing where aliens are going to be shooting down. And of course, actually, if we use our critical thinking, the chances, it'll look great. I mean, the technology to do this will look great. It'll be an amazing theatrical demonstration of, of what you could do. It'll make the, uh, the London fireworks display on January the 1st look like a damp squib, of course. But it will be a marvellous thing. And there'll be charges on the ground that'll go up and buildings will blow up and people will die because, you know, they want to convince people that this is actually happening so that they can perhaps, I don't know, have martial law or something like that and, and say, look, you need to get down you need to go into these safe spaces because we're all under attack that's that's the most likely thing that will happen and, and and people will believe it they will panic and they won't use their thinking skills there'll be all sorts of these things we're going to go through a shaky patch and it's going to come up and we mustn't panic we must use is this really happening is this real why now why should that be happening to us at this moment is there a bigger agenda we need to use our noggins they're there for a reason, and I would say to anybody that we should be using them, and we should be using them 24-7, and not believe the rubbish that will be coming from some of these manipulative authorities.